Hi folks, I'm Abhishek from the Azure Cosmos TV team at Microsoft. Today, I wanted to show you a demo of how you can use the Azure Cosmos TV Linux emulator along with VS Code in order to enhance your local development experience. So this is just a repository for demonstration purposes and it is actually based on the original re repo which has the Java SDK samples for the Cosmos TV SQL API. I already have this project open in VS Code right here, actually. So as you can see, this is the project and I've added this .dev container folder here in order to activate the VS Code remote containers experience. And everything else except this is just a part of the normal Java sample code, which I'm going to demonstrate. Now, take a step back and think about this. I'm sure you would have used a Docker Compose file in the past, right? And you could use something like this, what you see right now, in order to spin up everything on your local machine, and it would all work as expected, right? But with dev containers and VS Code, what you're essentially doing is using a Docker container as a full-fledged development environment. So let me just show you this, right? So, Essentially, what you can do is have something called a dev container.json file. It is just a JSON configuration file. That's pretty much all it is. And using that, you can actually tell VS Code how to create a development container with whatever you require. So imagine you want to work with Cosmos TV using its Java SDK on your local machine. And all you have is VS Code, Docker, Docker Compose, and some of those tools installed. Not even Java, you don't have Java installed on your machine, for instance, right? Now, what you can do is simply open up a repository using dev containers, and it will do all the heavy lifting of spinning up, spinning up one or more Docker containers along with the entire operating system, runtime stack, tool set, and you should pretty much be off to the races, right? So I will do a little bit more talking before showing the actual demo. This is just so that it is clear as to how everything actually works behind the scenes. So let me go back to my VS Code here and open this dev container.json file I was referring to earlier. Now this is, uh, this actually refers, I'll, I'll just go through the important attributes of this uh, JSON file. So the first one is this Docker Compose file, which I had just showed you. So essentially, this points to this docker compose.yml file, and I'll go over that in detail in a little bit. And some of the other important extensions are, or rather, uh, the, the settings are the fact that this workspace folder is set to slash workspace. Uh, we forward a port 8081, and I'll tell you in a bit as to why this is important. And there is a post create command, which we run after the container is actually created. And I'll talk about this as well in a little bit. Now let me go over this Docker Compose file. Now this is a very simple file, uh, nothing very special about it. You must have used it in your day-to-day -day workflows. So we have a couple of services defined here. One is called app and the other service is called Cosmos TV. Okay, now let me walk you through some of the important configurations. So this service points to a Docker file, and it depends upon this particular service called Cosmos TV. And we actually mount three important volumes. One is to forward the local Docker socket to this particular container. So I have uh, uh, Docker running locally here, of course. And the second one is we actually mount this folder right here on our local machine into a folder called slash workspace within the container. And finally, we actually mount the Maven repo cache as well from my local repository or my local operating system into this folder within the container. And finally, if we go to the Cosmos DB service, this directly, so this does not use a Docker file, this directly refers to this Docker, Docker image along with some other settings, some other environment variables. So in this case, it is the partition count and the fact that we actually enable data persistence for our Cosmos TV emulator. 
Okay, so with that said, let me quickly go over the docker file. Actually, I'll not walk you through this entire thing, uh, but I do want to explain that this docker file you know, sort of does all the heavy lifting of setting up the entire, uh, you know, so essentially it sets up this particular service in the docker, uh, you know, uh, defined in the docker compose file. So this is all it is, and it is actually based on this original, uh, you know, docker file, and I can show you this real quick here. So, so yeah, it is inspired from this, and I've made some minor changes for this to work for for my environment. All right. With that said, I can actually move to the demo itself, and for that, I will run this this command here real quick. So, what I'm going to do is actually first of all open this in a Dev container. Okay. So I'm going to choose rebuild and reopen in container. So right now, what you whatever you were seeing was on my local machine. And I'm going to open this in a uh, using dev container, I'll open this entire environment within a Docker container. So if I click on this, a new window will open up and you will see that dev containers experience has started already spun up in action. And essentially what it is doing is uh, let me go back to this slide over here. Okay, so essentially what it is doing is just using Docker Compose, just spinning up uh, this environment uh, using the Compose file which we had. And if I scroll down real quick, you will notice that uh, you know some of uh, this this image built pretty quickly because some of the layers were already cached, right? And as a post create experience. There is a specific script which got executed and it's called adsert.sh. And if I were to go here and show you what that actually does, so essentially it grabs the certificate for Cosmos TV and stores this within the key store of the JVM where the sample app is going to run. Right? So essentially I make sure that I keep retrying it at regular intervals because this depends upon the availability of the Cosmos TV emulator container itself, which might take a little bit of time before it actually starts up. So that's the reason I've added some retrying here and ultimately it all, it all succeeds. Okay, so now let me, yeah, and, and one more thing which I wanted to add is now we are within this slash workspace folder, right, within the container itself. Okay. Now what I'll do is I'll run this Java code, but before I do that, let me show you a couple of things here. So we have a bunch of samples here, but what I'm going to do is use a specific one and walk you through it real quick before I do that. So this is a sample CRUD quick start file here, which I have. So what it essentially does is create a couple of, uh, basically it creates a, uh, Cosmos TV database, a Cosmos TV container, and then creates a few documents and executes CRUD operations on them. So this is, like I said, a part of the original uh, you know, Java samples for Cosmos TV. The only minor difference here, which I have made is uh, commented out these parts so that the container and the database are not cleaned up as, uh, you know, when the demo ends, so that you're actually able to see um, them in the uh, emulator. With that said, I should have actually showed you the emulator itself. So because our Docker container environment and the entire uh, setup is up and running, you can actually access the emulator, emulator at localhost 8081. Now don't worry about this. I This is just because I haven't imported the certificate in my browser. You can always do that, but it is uh, safe to go and access the UI. So this is my emulator landing page. And if I were to go to the Explorer right here, you will notice that there are no databases or containers right here as of now. Now let me actually go ahead and run this demo. So what I'll do is just invoke Maven and uh, I will just call this particular class, the one which I just showed you and I pass on the, the emulator URL here along with the master key for the local emulator. Okay. Now if I hit enter, this will start running. 
and you will notice something real soon. Now, now see that there was no, essentially from a Maven perspective, we did not have to incur the overhead of, you know, downloading all the dependencies and, and so on and so forth, right? Now, just going back to why this is happening, it is because we have actually, if I were to go back to the Docker Compose file real quick, it is because we have already mapped our local Maven cache with this internal folder within our container itself. So we don't have to you know, sort of go through the entire process of, uh, you know, whenever you sort of go and restart this demo, the entire Maven caches will not be downloaded altogether. So scrolling down, if we see that the, our, our sample code should have already viewed its magic, would have created this uh, container and the database along with few of the entries, as well as some of the CRUD operations. Let me show that to you real quick. If I were to click the refresh, you see that the Azure sample family DB database has been created along with this container called family container. And if I were to drill down into the individual items, you would see that they have been created as well. So this is the ID and the partition key here and last name. And if I were to go into the individual items as well, you should see this is just a good old uh, JSON document which has been created based on the sample code. Now, if, I, if you want to just cross-check these entries, you will see, hey, we have Wakefield 70740, and you should see the same entry here again. Okay, so that's about it for the demo. But what I actually demonstrated right now is just the tip of the iceberg. And just think about this, you could leverage this for doing so much more. So for instance, it could be trying out uh, Cosmos features, it could be for iterative development, and more importantly, for setting up integration with a bunch of other components, right? That can already be quite complex. So that's all I have for today. I really hope you find this useful and let me know what and how you use this for. Until then, bye-bye.